big welcome to October Gallery, but an even bigger welcome to El Anachi. What a fantastic week it has been. Celebrating Elle's commission at Tate Modern with huge talks and all, all wonderful uh, work by Elle. Thanks to the Tate very much. We have loved collaborating with the Tate, thanks to all the sponsors. But an even bigger thanks to all the October Gallery team who has worked on both the collaboration with the Tate and on this exhibition. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> October Gallery began working with Elena Chui in 1993 <laughs> with exhibitions on wood sculpture. We published his first book thereafter a sculpted history of Africa, and exhibited his first bottle top cloths on October 9th, 2002, 21 years ago. I want to especially thank and embrace with all my heart Elizabeth Lalushek, the artistic director of October Gallery, who is completely dedicated to championing this magical and marvelous work. You know, it has been a week of celebration, a week of celebration of an extraordinary human being, an artist, a visionary, somebody who can make extraordinary dreams come true. Um, and you know, sometimes they're life-changing moments. And in 1993, when I was in this room next door and I was looking at a video of L taking the chainsaw and cutting through a piece of wood, scorching and burning it, it was such a life-changing moment for me. And I've been following his work and of course been involving in his work ever since then. I've taken the journey of going through burnt wood, through cassava graters, through milk tin lids, through mortars that were rolling down the hill, through driftwood that was collected from the beach, um, through um, so many different things, and then bottle tops, of course, that were hung over bushes. It was an extraordinary journey, and many works were so expansive, they were hung over palaces. El was taking over the entire world, almost, with his extraordinary body of work, and I think in the Turbine Hall, um, this year you see such a revelat revelatory work. It makes, it's, it's, it's a life-changing work. It's a work that you can immerse yourself into, an extraordinary work made by an extraordinary human being and artist. Thank you. I'm so very happy to introduce to you a trustee of October Gallery, an artist himself, a writer, and former curator of the British Collection of African Art at the British Museum, Chris Spring, Dr. Chris Spring. Ooh, hi, everybody. Thanks very much, Chili. I'm yes, proud. The most, most <laughs> fantastic thing about Chris, he's the first one who purchased the two bottle top cloths for the British yeah. Museum. Ooh. I was going to come on to that. <laughs> But it's a great, great pleasure and an honor to be a trustee of the <laughs> October Gallery. You know, Chile, we just had a round of applause, but an exhibition like this not only takes a huge amount of work to put on, but there's all the front of house people, all the people who are taking photographs, all the people who would make this an educational program. So big it up for them. A big round of applause for the October Gallery. <laughs> I think you'll agree it's been an hell of a week. A hell of a week. Uh, sorry about that one, but I couldn't resist it. <laughs> Any of you who have been on that journey this week will agree. Quite fantastic, an amazing journey. But for me, it kind of began 21 years ago. I think Chile was talking about. And actually on this wall right here were two works of art. And it's almost to the day, and I was marvelling at them back then. The artist had titled them Man's Cloth and Woman's Cloth. <coughs> 
And yet they were clearly not cloth in the conventional sense of the term. They had a kind of clothness about them, beautiful undulating folds, lovely colours and so on. But when you look closely, you could see they were made of metal, liquor bottle tops, joined by yet more metal. How can an artist make a cloth out of metal? Later on, these staggering works would begin to yield up those layers of meaning and of history that lay behind the artist's use of metal liquor bottle tops and their association with the slave trade, followed by the mass consumerism of the colonial period and the damage inflicted by both on the rich cultural traditions of Africa. Yet somehow that knowledge made these works of art seem all the more triumphant in their beauty. To me, they are the mother and father of the host of children, and now I think grandchildren, some of whom you can see on the walls around you here. And they appeared around the world during the past 21 years, bringing fame to their creator, but most of all in many ways, I feel, helping to put Africa front and center of the global contemporary art scene. <laughs> 21 years later, man's cloth still has pride of place at the entrance to the African galleries at the British Museum. L, together with many of the other artists of African heritage whose works are displayed at the BM, confront the problematic history of the building, the gallery, and the country in which their work is displayed, including the slave trade, the colonial looting, and the second scramble for Africa during the Cold War of the 20th century. Other contemporary artists there <coughs> celebrate the long history of artistic traditions in Africa, which stretch back into the deep past making not only their modern African voices heard, but in a real sense curating the galleries, which not long ago would have been left to the European social anthropologist, art historian, or archaeologist. I have to say I'm none of the above. <laughs> on Monday night, L took me on a similar journey to that which I experienced all those years ago at the October Gallery but this time to the Turbine Hall of Tate Modern in his show entitled Behind the Red Moon. Breathtaking beauty and awe-inspiring scale, followed by a gradual understanding of the history which lay behind the works themselves and of the building and country in which they were displayed. What was different, of course, was to see how spectacularly the medium which he had created for himself had evolved over all those intervening years. I say created for himself, but in fact, it's a medium which allows many assistants involved in the production to express their own creative voices. L very much sees himself as the conductor of an orchestra who has become attuned to the many different performing skills of those involved in making the finished work. So if you haven't been to Tate Modern, get along down there as soon as you can and just be bowled over. Also go back to the African galleries at the currently and maybe historically much maligned British Museum and take another look at the man's cloth displayed there, as well as the work of many other African artists of African heritage, including Magdalena Dundo, Sakari Douglas Camp, Awusu Ankoma, Ibrahim El Salahi, Rashi Qureshi, Taslim Martin, Zach Ove, the list goes on and on. Go and see their works for free. Of course, L has worked in many other different media, as this magnificent exhibition at the October Gallery testifies, including ceramics and wood, as well as printmaking. One of my favorite L quotes movingly describes his approach to working in wood. New wood has poetry locked in it. Old wood is poetry itself, time having worn off its prose. L's work is very much about history, but not the European written history with its linear timelines of kings and queens, but instead the African oral history that is cyclical rather than linear, a history which is continually evolving and mutating, a history in which events are commemorated 
not with a statue, but in the naming of a cloth. Again, I quote from Al, once more talking about his work in wood, but it could just as easily have been in metal, in a way that feels like the verse of a poem. I look at the textures of my work in process, and I think about the texture and grain of Africa's history. I look at the authentic colors of the different types of wood, and they remind me of the real colors of history. Before the pandemic, I met my friend Exodus Payne for the first time at an exhibition of my own drawings in Tower Hill. He was born and brought up in Zimbabwe, but has spent much of his adult life here in the UK. We spoke about getting together and talking about all things African, but then COVID intervened and we didn't see each other for another couple of years. But earlier this year, we met again, began to meet regularly on a regular basis, and I learned more about his work as a rapper and how he used hip hop as a way of educating young people, right from <coughs> primary school right up to university undergraduates. When I heard that October was going to put on an L exhibition at the same time as his Turbine Hall Commission and had asked me to open it, I in turn asked Chile whether Exodus might be commissioned to create his own hip hop tribute to L. Um. And she said, Yes! <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, give it up. Give it up to the one and only, the one and only great Exodus Payne. Check, check. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was, there was so much uh, to write about L. I, I, I sat at home and watched documentary after documentary. Um, I got some books from Chris and um, saw some of his amazing work at the BM and I also went on Monday as well for the exhibition. So uh, what I'm going to do here is, um, so everyone needs to uh, listen out and I, I use certain exhibition names and I use names of um, L's artwork and try and capture what it meant to me and <clears throat> yeah I, I, I need your assistance for the hook for the chorus so the, the hook will be this is something that you said as well uh, so the golden rule and then you've got to say they are no rules okay yeah. when you hear that the golden rule no from the heart when it starts with you the golden rule Artists for the soul, what you perceive, you view. The golden rule. Artists from the heart, when it starts with you. The golden rule. Artists from the soul, what you perceive, you view. Okay? okay. Yeah. Hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll catch it in, in the rap. But, uh, yeah, could you put the music on, please? Uh, it's called uh, Nomadic Aesthetic. That... <laughs> <laughs> for for legal reasons <laughs> <laughs> yeah could you turn the music up a little piece thank you <clears throat> yeah yeah 1944, the legend of L was born in Ghana is where his love for art took form after pictures on a chalkboard were drawn signs and symbols, symbols and signs Sankofa looking back and picking up science giving form to African heritage we find that which resembles African cultures sublime time and art, art and time actions of the hand, part of the design it's a spiritual dimension, part of the divine from working with wood, power tools and ceramics it's not just African and culture, it's art of the planet, human connection, the heart of the planet, materials and metaphors which started organic, it's earth shedding its skin on part of the canvas, yeah, so, the golden rule, art is from the heart and it starts with you, the golden rule, the art is for the soul, what you perceive, you view, the golden rule, art is from the heart and it starts with you, the golden rule, Artists for the soul, I used to see you, you, 1950s, 
1975 I was in Nigeria teaching at uni in the Nasaka area on a mission to bring a form which is free to cultural tradition for displaying through art L said real art is when we're playing art is communication you see what it's saying so you came from a strange bag in the bush filled with bottle caps before we understood him stitching, weaving, copper wire, keeping up traditions we admire, cut from a man's cloth and a woman's as well, between earth and heaven it's a metallic shell, shining, it's shimmering surface, however you place it, it's perfect, it's beautiful, beyond ocular purpose, the golden rule, art is from the heart when it starts with you, the golden rule, art is from the soul when you perceive you view, the golden rule art is from the heart and it starts with you the golden rule art is for the soul what you perceive you view Uh, yeah I, I apologize about the piece of paper it's just that L's done so much that my, my, I was overwhelmed and honoured. Um, I, I normally do a thing which is part of like hip-hop culture, which is an improvised rap that I thought I'd do because um, it would never be the same. Like L's work, when you place it in a different room, it's never the same. So what I'm going to do now, I can never recreate. But I'd love for your assistance, um, if you can hold something up that I could include in the rap, and um, anything, 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 anything. Money will be good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I would like L to give me the first word to start off the rap. Okay. What? What is that? Is it just? Oh, just the card. Can I? Can I? Um, I'll have a look at the card. I'll read it and I'll give it back to you. Um, could you put the la could you put dopest on that song? Thank you. And uh, turn it up a little please. Yeah. 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 Exodus pain, I freestyle casually. We're here right now at the October Gallery. And thanks to L for passing me a card about architects. I do it, yo, and it's large, I build it from the ground Yeah, I'll be the man, I need to cool down Could I borrow your fan, just to fan me down And I can't pass this, it's very, very nice I could use your glasses just to see a bit more fervor Could you turn up my music, cause I need to murder the music Right now, so you hear it I want everyone to feel it in their body and spirit as it's moving it's something that I ain't planning I love the way you're capturing it on the Canon camera Right there, I take the mic Thank you very much to Chili And thanks to Chris, of course Round of applause when I finish uh, Yeah, I diminish and get up on here And it's a cyclone I might take your iPhone Even though you're holding it up I'm having a laugh I might have to pass over here and take your scarf as well It's very nice that it's included and your headphones, I might move it, or oh, I might lose it uh, Just like your card, your ID right there It's really smart and I love your jacket Gotta tell me where it's from, it's really nice uh, But in here it's kind of warm uh, Yeah, yeah, cause we're heating up um, L just beat it up with the beautiful displays he's got um, Time and space, we've got a lot uh, Never lose the plot, cause it's work mine My whole mind puts it down a like turbine hall where I was on Monday And I saw the beautiful display hey, Yeah I had to make it rhyme though Explain her uh, I've got a rhyme flow Pass me the wine Oh, is it Prosecco? I don't even know I might have to even let go I love the way you brought nature in the room Cause this is all nature Came from Africa It's uh, cocooned But came out again And I might use this when I've got a pen Is that a mask? help you from COVID. I'm here, I've got to get focused. Did they notice? And you've got your hand up and I wave to you as well because it's all love. Yeah, and that's what I keep. Yield to whim, yield will to him as I sneak. They got it on the bag which was right at the back but she's put it down so I will continue to rap for a matter of fact. Oh, I like the water. I needed that earlier to clear my throat in order. So I 
I can do my rap of course uh, When I rap I need a round of applause at the end Yeah, do it And I'm tragically, no magically at the Yatoba Gallery Actually, this is factual see I represent hip hop Anytime I rap and I won't stop So when I say hip, you gotta say hop Hip, hip Yeah, 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 we won't stop Like hip, hip L's work is amazing, it's on top, like, thank you. Well, after a very lively rap presentation, it's really difficult for me to now make any impact. <laughs> And I'm very happy that there is going to be food after this, so I have to be. <laughs> that will send me some time. You know. Now, I want to maybe thank everybody here. Thank you, Toba Gallery, to start with. And everybody here very much for turning up. I remember the 21 years ago, in 1995 with African 95 on. The crowd that we had here was very, very little. Very, very little. <laughs> and uh, seeing this kind of enthusiastic crowd here today uh, makes me think that the world's population has grown bigger. <laughs> So I want to thank you all for this. Uh, it's been a journey which uh, started 20, 21, is it more than 21 years? Sorry? More than 21 years. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't know they were existing my work in 93. In 93. Yeah, but I, I, I remember <laughs> 95 when I, I had my first uh, solo show outside of Africa. I've been in Britain all the time in Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, and uh, the first time that I came out of Africa to show was here. And uh, after that, it's been a very long journey in and out, in and out, in and out. And eventually, from this small gallery, I have been opportuned to now show in a, one of the biggest galleries in town at the state, state and I want to thank uh, everybody very much for attending up the October Gallery for making it happen. Thank you. Thank you.